Native people, Native culture, Native knowledge. Hi, I'm Jeannie Green, bringing you award-winning Heartbeat Alaska. Bringing you national and international Native news, this is award-winning Heartbeat Alaska, the premier Native voice in Native programming. There's a heartbeat louder It's in the air There's a heartbeat Deep inside our mother Are you too cool to Cam, with Heartbeat Alaska, here's Jeannie Green. Hello, welcome to Heartbeat Alaska. Native news and native entertainment, I'm Jeannie Green. Thank you so much for joining us. If you're a first time viewer, Heartbeat Alaska is native news from a native perspective. And much of the video was sent in by viewers just like you. Video like visiting St. Michael's, Alaska, thanks to videographer Ron Feiger from that village. We also traveled to Juneau, Alaska. The legislature session is underway and the subject is getting heated up, Indian country. Gary Fife has native news across the nation. I'll be back with more villages across the state with native news from the lower 48 and native and Canadian native music videos. Heartbeat Alaska is brought to you in part by the Division of Alcoholism and Drug Abuse and the Alaska Council on Prevention of Alcohol and Drug Abuse. Together, preventing substance abuse statewide. This is Native News Across the Nation. I'm Gary Fife. When President Clinton called for changes in visitor flights over the Grand Canyon, what he called for would result in more flights over the lands of three tribes, the Navajo, the Wallapai, and the Havasupai. They're charging that federal officials have left them out of talks concerning those changes. They're worried that the increased noise from aircraft will disturb their own tourist businesses. The Alaska State Legislature has approved a $1 million war chest to fight the U.S. court ruling that says Indian country in the legal sense of the word does exist in Alaska. The legislature has okayed $500,000 for itself and the same amount for the administration to use in making its case against tribal sovereignty. Tribes in the upper Midwest have banded together to battle an increased presence of state and federal governments in their affairs. 26 tribes have formed the Midwest Alliance of Sovereign Tribes. It's an effort to resist pressure by state governments to get new federal laws allowing state taxation of tribal gaming revenues. Says one member, we can't afford to play defense anymore. When the U.S. government attempted to civilize natives corralled on reservations, one part of the change was to change tribal names into English ones. Now the Arapaho tribe of Wyoming has one resource to help change those names back, sort of, with the help of the St. Stephen's Indian Mission. A new 30-page book translates the English back into Arapaho, and in cases where it's available, it also gives biographical information about those people. We'd like to thank those of you who are sending in your information. It certainly makes a difference. We love to share it, and we want to see more of it. We're going to tell you how to do that, and I'll be right back with more Native news across the nation. Contact Heartbeat Alaska with your news. Heartbeat Alaska, 5861 Arctic Boulevard, Unit B, Anchorage, Alaska, 99518. That's Heartbeat Alaska, 5861 Arctic Boulevard, Unit B, Anchorage, Alaska, 99518. Or give us a call at 1-907-563-7440 or fax us at 1-907-563-9309. Heartbeat Alaska, 
Your news is our news. An Aleut grandmother has been released after a short stay in jail after defying state authorities over placement of her grandchildren. Nora Newman has actually been behind bars three times for refusing to turn over her grandchildren to a woman Newman charges is an unfit mother. The courts will decide whether or not to pursue the case against the grandmother after it decides who has jurisdiction in the matter of the child custody case, the state or the tribe. The Colville Tribe of Washington has moved to protect the use of the peyote cactus but button in native religious ceremonies on their reservation. Indian Country Today reports the tribe passed the council re resolution in order to clarify the reservation law in regards to possession of the peyote cactus buttons. For, that's for the legitimate members of the Native American church who live on Colville lands. Under the old law, a native man married to a tribal member was arrested, but the tribe said it did not want to prosecute him. The state of Utah will be marking its 150th year of statehood next year, and so far, few of the natives in the state feel like joining in those festivities. A Utah State Commission has included tribes when it began soliciting participation, but out of the eight tribal groups recognized there, only three groups have filed a grant application to take part. They want to tell the state's history from the native perspective. And finally, in a story that's near and dear to the heart of a Wolf Clan member, the Nez Perce Tribe of Idaho reports success in its efforts to bring back wolves to the Yellowstone and the Idaho State region. They did admit that wolves have preyed on local livestock, but they're offering a compensation grant to ranchers who do lose animals to wolves. One measure of success, says the project staff, says the wolves have survived so far and that three of the mated pairs have produced litters. That's one for we are, uh, the Cherokee word for wolf. This is Native News Across the Nation. I'm Gary Fife, and back to Jeannie and more, Heartbeat Alaska. Thank you, Gary. In Alaska, if you want a heated argument, all you have to do is mention the word sovereignty. This is especially true in Juneau, Alaska, where lawmakers are struggling with a ruling. It's sort of like today's version of cowboys and Indians, only the weapons aren't bows and arrows and shotguns, they're votes and the dollar bill. Last November, a Supreme Court decision recognized the interior villages of Venati, Alaska, and Arctic Village as Indian country. To Alaska natives, this decision meant a victory, an opportunity for self-government for 229 federally recognized tribes existing in Alaska. Indian country, a term more familiar in the lower 48. It's a legal classification that applies to reservation land in the lower 48. By granting that designation, the court upheld the village's self-government powers. And these powers include the right to impose taxes and regulate land use. The state of Alaska appealed the Supreme Court decision. Governor Tony Knowles, whose own election was made possible by the rural vote, asked the legislature for $500,000 to cover the administrative costs and to persuade the U.S. Supreme Court to take up the case. It passed and added another half a million dollars, a total of $1 million for the legislature and the state to fight Indian country. So. I have to, the, the bottom line is that I am led to believe with everything that has happened thus far that the 500 or the half a million dollars that is appropriated to the legislature is going to be used to spread propaganda. That's a hard, heavy, serious word to use. Another hard, heavy, serious word heard in the halls in Juneau, Alaska is racism. There's evidence that both sides of the fence are acutely aware 
of this possibility. I don't believe that uh, we in Alaska can recognize racially defined governments and if that's racism then so be it because our, our Constitution says that we, um, you know, the Constitution protects everyone. It doesn't protect one race over the other and if you're asking us to support governments that are racist governments then I have a problem with that. Should be included as Doyon shareholders to continue. Several Republicans also argue that natives gave up their Aboriginal rights, including all claims to sovereignty, when they signed on to the 1971 Alaska Native Claims Settlement Act, which set aside nearly $1 billion and 44 million acres of land to form native corporations. When An Anilka and Anska were passed, it it was very clear, there was very clear language that Alaska does not have Indian country. Now the Ninth Circuit Court is saying, and Ada Deer last year saying, yes, we do have Indian country. The law of the land, the law that's on the books, passed by Congress, say no. It is an issue that the courts and Congress is going to have to clarify. Plastic containers, which is the norm nowadays, we've... Line our Opponents of Indian country stress that all Alaskans need to work together. Yet, many in rural Alaska believe that they're unequally yoked. In other words, equality just is not there. Many in rural Alaska live in third world conditions, conditions that many lawmakers themselves would not tolerate, and some that have no choice. But we can't ignore the three families in Alaska. It's not one family. We have a rural family, we have a bush family, and we have an urban family. And we have to recognize that. And we cannot anymore, as Native people or non-Native people, ignore the fact that a Georgiana Lincoln living 100 air miles away from Fairbanks still takes a slop bucket and dumps it in a hole in the ground. A five gallon paint bucket that a Georgiana Lincoln to have to use a bathroom has to bundle up and go down a path and sit over a hole in the ground when we dump our garbage, that we're dumping our garbage, everything, into one pit. That we have to walk around in so many of our villages with a cloth over our mouth because of the dust in the summertime. That in the wintertime, in some of the villages that cannot even dig a hole in the ground because of uh, wetlands, has human waste in a plastic bag to put outside and it freezes and hopefully you get it up to the lagoon in the summertime when that bucket is slopping around with human waste and some of it has to dump out onto the road and we're tracking it back into our houses and hepatitis um, throughout our communities because of those unsanitary conditions. Not because we want it that way, but because there's no money. Um, I think one of the perceptions out there is that, uh, you know, felt, being felt by the Native community that, um, you know, this is, this is uh, an issue where uh, the state is using resources that uh, comes from the rural areas uh, to fight people that, that live in, and who are also citizens of the state of Alaska. And, uh, and there were questions raised as to whether or not uh, um, the same level of consideration should be given to the people of Venati since they are, uh, you know, so there's arguments around and, and debates around that. The whole issue of, uh, of Indian country, I think, is, is an issue that's uh, really misunderstood. Um, and it's one that um, I think we need to, as, a, as an Alaska community, 
uh, educate ourselves on, and I think we need to, we need to do that. Um, but you know, there's there's so many issues around the taxing, the fish and game management, uh, those things that that are fears. Uh, I think that if people were to understand the issues uh, and the legalities behind some of those things, it would quell a lot of those fears, uh, that, that there aren't the, as big a threats out there as, as people may seem to think. Indian country. The implications are significant. In the Juneau, Alaska war zone, Native leaders look a little shell-shocked. To them, Indian country is seen as a way out of economically depressed third world conditions. To opponents of Indian country, it's called evil and dangerous, a threat to the sovereignty of the state of Alaska. Both sides have mighty weapons. The state of Alaska, a rich war chest, the natives, a rich heritage. Goodbye, my son. Hey, oh, hey, oh, hey. What is freedom? To some in our culture, freedom means living off the land. For others, it means working for a corporation. We are free to walk in two worlds. There isn't anything else to do. You want to get high? Of course. Some do not choose to be free. Live drug free. A message from the Alaska Council on Prevention of Alcohol and Drug Abuse. For information, call 1-800-478-PREV. Heartbeat Alaska now visits St. Michael, Alaska a largely Yupik village that it once was a trading point for the Inupiaq, the Yupik Eskimos, and the interior Athabascan Indians, all before Russian discovery. The Russians established a stockade post here in 1833. The post was the northernmost Russian settlement in Russian America. St. Michael became a major gateway to the Alaskan interior via the Yukon River. A United States military post, Fort St. Michael, was established in 1897, but was abandoned as a base in 1917. As many as 10,000 people were said to have lived here during the Nome Gold Rush. The village remained an important port until the construction of the Alaska Railroad. Remnants of St. Michael's historic past may be seen today. The most interesting thing about any village, of course, are the people themselves. St. Michael is mainly a Yupik Eskimo village located on the southern coast of Norton Sound in western Alaska. The community is located on the eastern end of St. Michael Island facing St. Michael Bay. It's 48 miles southwest of Unalakleet and 125 miles southeast from Nome. St. Michael's nearest neighbor is the community of Stebbins, located approximately 10 miles away. And by the way, Heartbeat Alaska will be visiting Stebbins, Alaska on next week's show. The native people of St. Michael's, Alaska rely upon subsistence food harvest. Many residents complement their earnings with commercial fishing, reindeer herding, and subsistence food harvesting. Heartbeat Alaska wouldn't be Heartbeat Alaska without Native rock and roll. And here by popular request is Hall Putty Chobi, Chief Jim Billy of the Seminole Tribe. Big alligator, he's mysterious. Big alligator, he's amphibious. Big alligator, he's dangerous. But with a big alligator, you can be prosperous. I was raised in the swamp by my old grandpa. We ate turtle meat, a fish called gar. Grandpa told me about panthers and bears, but most of all, he told me to beware. I'll but the chubby, not your mitts kick up. I'll but the chubby, go get me one. I'll but the chubby, you know what you do. I'll but the chubby, be my judge. As the days of the summers grew longer and hot, Grandpa took me on my first gator hunt. We pushed through sawgrass and willow slew with a big yellow dog, a duck out there. The dog started sniffing something in the air. Grandpa said, must be gator over there. 
myself. I could catch alligators by myself. But my dog didn't know what my grandpa said. He jumped in the water by the gator's head. Hunted, but the chewy didn't even pause. My dog disappeared in the gator's jaws. I can still hear my grandpa saying, Hey. Okay. 
you so much for joining us for Native News and Native Entertainment. I'm Jeannie Green, wishing you well. I hope you have a fabulous week. Please send video in. We love hearing from you, and thank you so much for all your letters. Thank you, students in Marshall, Alaska. Uh, their whole class sent beautiful letters to me and encouraging me to keep doing the work because they said Heartbeat Alaska brings all natives together. Well, thank you so very much. You have given me energy to continue for years and years and years. God bless you and God bless all of you. Tune in again next week. We'll see you then.